Good morning to you all. We just want to thank uh, God that we are all here today and um, we are going to uh, have our service um, as the usual thing during this coronavirus period. And uh, let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you that we are here because of you. We just want to thank you that we are able to worship you even in this period where all the buildings have been closed before us. But Father, the church has not been closed. The church of God is still there. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those who are more vulnerable. May we who have luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we we have flexibility to care for our children when their schools are closed. Remember those who have no options. May we, we have no counsel our trips. Remember those who have no safe place to go. May we, we have losing our margin in terms of money in the tumult of the economic market. Remember those who have no margin at all, those who have no money in the bank. May we, we have settled in for a quarantine at home. Remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. Let us treat one another with love from above. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, when we cannot hug each other, when we cannot come closer to each other, let us yet find ways to be loving, embrace God to our neighbors. Be with us, Father God. We just want to thank you that we are able to come and to worship in different ways, in different forms. Father, bless us as we are able to listen to today's message as we are able to discern what God is calling us to do. Father, we just want to thank you for that. Be with us. In your name I pray. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call uh, Gam to come and read the Bible from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. Uh, Gam is going to come and read the passage to us. Thank you. Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11, the triumphal entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They bought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, our message this morning as it comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. And I have come up with a theme, Are you willing to be a donkey? Are you willing to be a donkey? Throughout the Bible, 
We find donkeys serving behind the scenes and helping where needed. Even to this day, donkeys are considered reliable helpers, sure-footed on mountain terrain, physically hard in harsh environments, and very strong violence careers. In Bible times, donkeys were a symbol of industry, peace, and at times, wealth, while horses were the sign of wealth and war, power and the strength of a military force. It seems that donkeys feel safest and most secure when they clearly see where the edge is, where the greatest danger lies. What a navy is a donkey is knowing an edge is near, but not being able to see it and so gorge the best path to take. In today's gospel, text is easy to get swept up in the celebration of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. For once, all the people around Jesus seem to be supportive. For once, people appear excited about his presence. For once, the crowds are confident in his abilities. They are happy to see Jesus. To be sure, their shouts indicated there was still a general misconception about his true identity. He is called variously by the crowds, son of a debt, the one who comes in the name of the Lord and prophet, by citing the royal acclamation from Zechariah 9, verse 9, Matthew brings all the expectation of the messianic king to his dramatic scene. But over once again, all the Hosannas, the gospel writer is careful to emphasize an almost seemingly discordant note in this celebratory theme. Jesus specifically instructs two disciples to appropriate for him a very particular mount, a young donkey, a colt, for him to ride on. Matthew takes even carefully knows the colt's mother, a donkey, and includes her in the procession. Matthew doesn't want anyone to misread the identity of Jesus' mount and suppose that this colt was some young, high-spirited was a far more obvious noble steed. No, Matthew wants readers to be perfectly aware of the incongruity between the crowd's shouts, the royal procession, and the humble, simple beast of burden upon which Jesus rode. Donkeys were work horses. Donkeys were the common pack animals used by hard-working laborers, landowners, and merchants alike. More exotic, long-distance travel and rich transport caravans employed the more demanding expensive and hot camel to carry big loads. So the donkey was a much simpler, less impressive work. It accomplished the most mundane of daily tasks in small villages and inside the big cities as well. Gray, substantial, and subservient donkeys were a necessary but an exceptional part of first century life. So donkey, fulfilling the role of a burden of beast by taking responsibility and burden of others, being the symbolic representation of facility, hard work and determination, willpower, obstinance, dedication towards work and devotion. So donkeys have a well-known reputation of being a stubborn creature. That is what they are known for. I will talk about it later. This donkey is clearly Jesus' only choice of mount for his entrance into Jerusalem. Riding on that humble beast, Jesus both inhabited the ways of Zachariah's prophets and illustrated the dual nature of his messianic identity. He was king of kings and lords of lords, but he was also servant of servants, a wake horse helper of the helpless. While he was ushered into Jerusalem with a royal processional, he rode on the steed of the simplest peasant, animal, the back of a donkey doesn't put one up above the heads of others. In fact, sitting on the short-legged beast put the rider pretty much at face-to-face -face level with other cows. You're able to be on the same level with other people. So Jesus couldn't impressively ride through a crowd mounted on a donkey. He could only ride in the midst of the crowd, being as such much a part of the crush as were all others. So we could see something here. Church tradition tells us 
though none of the gospel reported that it wasn't Jesus' first donkey ride, meaning that he was riding other donkeys before this one. Matthew's text doesn't detail how Jesus traveled with Mary to Egypt and back to Nazareth again. Nor does Luke's gospel describe how Mary and Joseph joined up to Bethlehem. They don't talk about it. But all of us have in our hands the picture of a pregnant Mary painted on the back of a sturdy donkey. Our mind's eyes put her back on that beast of the escape of Egypt and the homeward trek to Nazareth after Herod had died. He was, she was, as they were going back, you can see they were now traveling, I think, on the, horse of a, on the back of a donkey. So the church's long suggested that in honor of the donkey's humble service to Jesus, the animal was rewarded with a permanent sign of the cross. For most donkeys do show a distinctive black cross pattern across their side shoulders. I, I've looked at it and I found that it's really there. Right on the shoulders of front legs of the horse, if you look in front, there's a sign of a cross. And that is something I never thought about it, but it's there. Despite this leap service from church tradition, the dawn still remains far beyond the pair of glory. Little girls don't dream of riding across fields on a little donkey. And everyone from Shakespeare to Pinocchio knows that fools and dolls are depicted as donkeys or idiots. Yet if the mission of the church is to carry Christ into the world, then in each of us is called to be a donkey. There is no particular groan in being a donkey. There is only long trails, steep roads, heavy roads, and little or no recognition for completed job after you have done it because you are just a donkey. But look at what we are carrying. We are carrying the king of kings, the prince of peace, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the person we are carrying right now. You and I are called to be a donkey. Donkeys are known for strong backs and sure feet. Donkeys carry a lot of burdens, and they carry their laws along paths that are too treacherous for others to walk. And we are being called to do the same. Of course, donkeys are known for one another's characteristics. They can be stubborn, obstinate, stiff-necked. From the days of the Hebrews in the wilderness, God's people themselves have been, often been identified as stiff-necked people. In the book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 9 and Exodus chapter 34 verse 9. Perhaps this same significant quality added to Jesus strays of the donkey. A stubborn little state with a mind of its own. Even though it would work hard and long. Sound familiar to us as Christians. It really sounds familiar. So I end the same one morning with a question. Will you be a donkey? Will you carry Christ wherever he goes? However he goes. What is God calling you to do during this coronavirus pandemic? What is God calling you to do at work and home during this difficult time for so many people around the world? What is God calling you this morning? Perhaps he's praying for your neighbors and checking in to see if they have what they needed at home. Or maybe it is setting up a small group online to have a virtual Bible study. Or perhaps it is modeling for your children how God takes away our fears as we trust in Him. Or perhaps it is some, just giving someone a call. How yep I was three days ago when I received a call from one of our church members just checking on us and the family to say how we were going. It was really something that made, made the whole family so happy. Will you be a donkey? Will you walk cliffs? Will you not be afraid of the ages and the extremes? Will you not be afraid of contracting coronavirus because they are helping somebody? Will you be the cliff walkers who change the ages between this world and the next? Between hate and love? Between war and peace? Will you be a donkey? Will you be humble enough to be a beast of burden? To carry the burdens of others, helping other people to carry your cross. The coronavirus pandemic is causing the world to realize just how fragile life can be. More than ever, people need to hear that God is good and offers us salvation through Jesus Christ. 
It is this period that we need to show that God is there. It is through this period that we need to show people love. It is through this people period that we need to walk outside our own environment to go and help those who are helpless, those who cannot help themselves, the elderly people, the vulnerable, those who are less uh, pri privileged. As Christians, we have a unique opportunity to glorify God as we save our neighbors. What is God calling you to do at work and home during this difficult time for so many people around the world? Perhaps it is praying for your neighbors and checking in to see if they what they need at home. Or maybe it is something different. But I'm saying, what is God say, saying to you? Finally, will you be a donkey? Will you shout with joy and praise, welcoming the divine presence with the Hosannas? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Will you be able to shout out in the street? Ever wonder why the donkey is the only animal in the Bible that speaks? Cow birth at his age and birthday, part offered his, this testimony. In the Bible, there is talk of a donkey, or to be quite correct, an ass. It was allowed to carry Jesus to Jerusalem. If I have achieved anything in this life, then I did so as a relative of the donkey, who at that time was going in his way carrying an important burden. The disciples had said to its owner, the master has need of it. And so it seems to have pleased to have God used me at this time. Apparently, I was permitted to be the donkey which was allowed to carry as best as I could better theology, a little piece. That is what our cowbirds said in his theology. Will you be a donkey this Palm Sunday? Will you be willing to carry Jesus wherever he calls you to go? In difficult places, in difficult situations, I just recall that the doctors and the nurses are some of those people who are carrying Jesus. On the front line, meeting people, sometimes without even enough protective clothing, but they are working in the front line risking their own lives. But I know why they would be able to survive. It's because Jesus is with them. Jesus is riding with them. Will you be a donkey this Palm Sunday where you are able to carry Jesus outside? Outside of your comfort zone. Outside to help others. Knowing that Jesus is there with us. Don't panic. Jesus is in need of it. That was the call. When anyone asks you just say, Jesus is in need of it. Jesus is in need of your expertise. Jesus is in need of your knowledge. Jesus is in need of your physical health during this coronavirus. May the good Lord help us as we continue to move on. Not knowing what, when this is going to end. But what we know is that God is in control. So we are not afraid of the future. For because we We've got the one who handles the future. We've got God, we've got Jesus in our life. So because Jesus is in our life, we are not afraid of the future because he's the one who controls the future. May the good Lord bless you this morning as you listen to this sermon with your family, with your friends. Just understand that God is there for you. I know sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you think of renouncing your faith, but I'm saying Keep hanging on. Jesus is there. He's in control. Be a donkey for Jesus so that he can ride with you everywhere he goes. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. It's okay? Alright. Okay. Uh, morning again. It's time for Holy Communion, and uh, we, we, I, I would like you to just, uh, if you are watch, watching the TV, just pause a bit, or whatever gadgets you are using, and then go and get the bread, and um, the grape juice, if you have got it, or anything equivalent to that, uh, and bring it together, so that when I'm now offering, you can just take that as a part of your Holy Communion.
And um, uh, in the following directive, in, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 to 34, I'm going to read. Uh, in the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Uh, no doubt that there have to be difference among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it's not the Lord's supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? But shall I say to you, shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For as I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body for which this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in the remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until you come. So then whenever you eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, you will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they get they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment upon themselves. That is why men among you are weak, ill, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we are of more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. And anyone who is hungry should eat something at home, so that when you meet together, it not, may not result in judgment. And when I come, I'll give further instructions. Receive the word of Christ, which has been broken for you. Take it. Receive the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed for you. Drink it all. May God, who is the Lamb of God, continue to bless you and guide you wherever you will be going. May the good Lord be with us. Thank you. Amen. Just as a reminder, please let us not forget to continue with our tithing and through our online giving, or maybe you can go to the bank direct and give. Remember, this is <clears throat> Holy Communion Sunday, and we have maybe two givings. The other one is for the, those who are disadvantaged. You remember the benevolent fund we are supposed to give on Holy Communion Sunday. So today, it's your duty to commit yourself to those two givings, the Sunday offering and the benevolent fund. May we continue to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord of the journey, as you set your face towards Jerusalem, we now set our faces toward the world for which you died. May we be your people wherever you send us. May we be willing to be your donkey wherever we want to, you want to go with us. May we know your presence on the way. King Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Before all things and far beyond tomorrow, the same yesterday, today and forever, exploding all our preconceptions, our fears, our assumptions, our expectations, 
Let our lions go before us, walk beside us. May you always honor your name. Lord Jesus Christ, we just want to thank you. I pray for all our church members who are not feeling well at the present time. I pray for those who are going difficult moments of loneliness. I pray for those who are far away from their own families, their own ch children. I pray that, Lord, you can take care of them. Be with us, Father, as we continue to worship you and encourage each other that God is in control. We are not afraid, for you are always there for us. Bless us, Father. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.